Hi guys, it's Phil. Yesterday we announced our new 2020 Denon X series AVRs and one of the features we've been getting a lot of questions about is DTS-X Pro. And the number one question is, am I going to have to buy all new content again? How, ma how many copies of Raiders of the Lost Ark or, or Star Wars am I gonna have to buy? Well, the nice thing about it is because DTS-X is an object-based surround sound format instead of a channel-based surround sound format, all of the content you already have in DTS-X is also compatible with DTS-X Pro. For the last few years, DTS-X was limited to 11.1. And but that was not because of the content, that was because of the processing capability and licensing from DTSX. So let's go in and talk about why you do not need to buy new content. Before we talk about object-based surround sound, we have to also talk about channel-based surround sound. Basically, all of the sounds are put on a mixing board and then they mix those particular sounds to a channel. So if I want something to sound like it's coming from between two speakers, the engineer had to physically move and pan that sound from one channel to another. So if I wanted something to appear between two speakers, like in stereo, I would put that sound equally between the left and the right. If I wanted to pan an object um, from the front of the room to the back of the room or make it appear like it's in the middle of the room, I would put that sound equally in, like I said, the left front speaker and the left rear speaker. And that would make it seem like it's coming from the left side of the room. That is how channel-based content has been mixed. And every time they wanted to increase the channel count, they had to in introduce a new surround sound format. ProLogic, Dolby Digital, 7.1, 9.1. So that's how they got more channels in the format. But object-based material is completely different. With object-based surround, the surround engineer does not mix it to a channel. What he does is he assigns information to each audio object. So first thing, location. Where is it located in the space? I want that sound to be right here. The next question is, how big of that, is that sound going to be? Is it a small bell ringing? Is it a thunderclap? So location, size, how loud is it going to be? And also, how diffuse? So if it's a, is it a focused object? like a ring of a bell, or is it a large crowd being washed across the room or like ocean waves? So location, size, and how much, how diffuse or focused the sound is. Once that information is um, embedded into the signal, the processor in your receiver looks at the information about the objects and based on the amount of channels you have in your system, 5.1.4, 7.1.6, it utilizes the channels it has available to put that object in your room at the size, the scale, and with the amount of focus that the sound engineer intended. The next question you may be asking yourself is how is DTS-X material compatible with older DTS systems that are channel-based? Well, that is because of how they utilize the system. This is an example of an object-based mixing board. The one I'm using here is actually a Adobe Atmos um, system, but DTS-X is very similar. The first thing they do is they can take up nine objects a lot of times, and they make those objects stationary, and they basically put those objects' locations where the channels are on a older DTS or, or Adobe Atmos system. So those first nine objects act like channels because they're fixed in one position. Then the mixing engineer has well over a hundred other objects that he can put in the different area spaces of the room. So on the left side, you see which objects he's utilizing. So those little green dots. The middle diagram shows the speaker configuration in that particular room. To the right side, you will see this little cube. That represents the room and the locations of those objects in space. The brighter the object appears, the louder it is. The bigger the object appears, the bigger its actual scale when it talks about sound. So by, by basically using a joystick, I can put sounds wherever I want in a room. So I have the nine objects that act like channels to make it backwards compatible, and then I can whiz all these other objects around the room. 
Well, the next question someone asked me was, well, um, I thought, isn't, isn't movies mixed in channels? Movies are done using mostly Foley. They record the actor. They may record the other actor at a totally different time. Um, most sounds you hear in a movie are not mixed live. It's Foley. It's basically someone waving a tin can or banging on something to make it sound like I'm walking up a hill or smashing a tomato to make it sound like I'm stabbing somebody in a horror movie. It's not an actual, it's not the actual thing. It's a sound that they make, and that sound is just an object, and I can put that object anywhere I want. All of those sounds can be assigned as an object, and those objects can be put any place in the room the mixing engineer decides to do it. Now, I can mix it all down into seven channels. I can mix it all down into nine channels, or I could take those objects, such as a bell, or an airplane flying by, or a helicopter, assign it as an object and put it any place in the room at the size and scale that I want. The next one is, well, what about music? Is it music mixed in channels? Now, if I have a high-end hi-fi recording, I may use maybe one or two microphones to record a live recording. But a lot of recordings are actually done, um, they, record, they mic the drums, an object, they mic the guitar, an object. They mic the piano, an object. They mic the each singer, individual objects. So yes, I could take half of those and put it to the left and channel and half of those and put it to the right channel. Or with something like DTSX or DTSX Pro, I can assign each one of those instruments and singers as an object and put that object any place I want it to be. So object-based means I can assign any number of channels available in my receiver to render that object in your room. The limitation, as I said before, for DTSX in your home was 11.1. And this had nothing to do with the content. It had to do with the licensing and the processing of the older DTSX renderers that were in AVRs. The new DTSX Pro decoder can support up to 30.2. Two uh, channels or 30.2 speakers in your room. So if it's native DTSX, the renderer will take those objects and render them using up to 30.2 speakers in your home. If it is non object based, such as an older piece of DTS or DTS HD content, the decoder will take the channels and send it to an up mixer. Their new NeuroX up mixer will, will up mix the signal to utilize up to 30.2 speakers. No new content, just a new way to utilize the content you already have. And then finally, you can even utilize the NeuroX up mixer to take non-DTS and up mix that to up to 30.2 speakers. There are no 30.2 channel receivers. It just isn't. But Denon for 2020 is introducing the first AVRs that will support DTSX Pro, which means you can get more than just 11 channels of processing um, built into a Denon receiver, starting with the 6700. And we will also do a firmware update on the 8500. In addition, there's also a benefit when you're looking at IMAX Enhanced. The base of IMAX Enhanced is actually DTSX, which is an, or now DTSX Pro, which means I can utilize um, an even better system to recreate the impact of being in an IMAX theater. The newly announced Denon 6700 has 11 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing. So I will repeat that. The X6700 has 11 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing. So you can go out and buy an external amplifier and drive up to 13 speakers in your home using a 6700. The 8500, which is already in market, has 13 channels of amplification and 13 channels of processing. Because the 6700 can drive up to 13.2 channels, with external amplification, you have several options to choose from. You could do a traditional um, Dolby Atmos system that's like a 7.2.6, utilizing two front heights, two rear heights, and two 
top middles. I can also do a RO3D layout where I actually have a center height speaker and the speak the top surround, which RO3D also calls the voice of God. DTSX Pro, as well as IMAX Enhance, also support a center height as well as a top surround speaker. So I have, a, I have the option of doing the traditional Dolby Atmos 7.2.6 configuration or an Oro 3D slash DTSX Pro slash IMAX Enhance 7.2.6 configuration. Well, what if I want the Atmos one and I want that Oro 3D slash DTSX Pro slash IMAX configuration? What can I do? Well, the X8500 has 13 channels of amplification, 13 channels of processing, and 15 speaker terminals, which can be assigned. So I can actually switch by going to the menu, and I can switch from the top middle um, and driving the top middle speakers in Adobe Atmos configuration to the center height and the top surround application that is utilized for Oral 3D and DTSX Pro. So the next question is, say I go out and I buy a X6700 and I set my speaker up in the 7.2.6 Atmos configuration. Is it still going to sound good when I play back DTSX Pro? And the answer is yes. DTSX Pro supports up to 30.2 speakers or think of it also as 30.2 positions, while Dolby Atmos can support 24.1.10, or basically 34 positions. So one supports 30 positions for, for speakers, and Dolby Atmos supports 34 positions for speakers. And if you look at the layout of these speakers, they are very similar. The only difference is DTSX Pro supports a center height and a top surround, which are not supported by Dolby Atmos. But all of the other configurations you were going, you're thinking about doing um, and where you would put those speakers for Dolby Atmos will work perfectly fine and deliver an outstanding performance if you choose to utilize that same configuration on DTSX Pro. Now, a lot of times people think there's a difference, a huge difference because of the way the drawings are done. So if you look at the DTSX slash IMAX enhanced drawing, you'll notice that the couch is equidistant right in the middle of all of the different um, surround sound speakers and height speakers. Yet when you look at the Dolby Atmos drawing, the couch is pushed back towards the rear surrounds. But I want you to look at the angles. So on the DTS-X one, they recommend for your front speakers that they have an angle of about 30, plus or minus 30 degrees. If you look at the Dolby Atmos one, they give you a range, 22 to 30. The 22 is close to the couch being pulled back. If I push that couch forward, it's going to get closer to 30, or probably will exactly hit 30. So if I had put that couch in the middle, those angles when it comes to the approach of the sound is very similar. There are some differences with the angle of approach, how the speaker is angled, but it's not enough for you and the average consumer to notice a major difference. There are solutions that are far, 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 far more exper expensive that'll allow you to put 30 speakers in a room and switch between those 30 speakers. Denon is the first AVR manufacturer to release a receiver with DTSX Pro. That actually shows our leadership in this industry. And we can do it starting at prices below $3,000 with the X6700, as well as adding that to our flagship AVR, the X8500. So in summary, do I need to buy new content to enjoy DTSX Pro? And the answer is no. The DTSX content you already have is just going to get better. I hope I answered your questions. Um, take care, and I will talk to you soon.